you can buy Thornwell if you really want, okay? Just go buy it. I don't mind. I told you, like, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what, like, how, like, when people continue discussions, when I've made very clear why exactly I think it's better, like, exactly, like, I've explained every interaction, I've explained everything that could possibly happen, and then I still read Thornmail, I'm just, like, confused. Are you, like, trying to share your opinion? And I should just ignore it, because, like I said, like, I don't think it's good. I, Thornmail is terrible against Warwick, because he deals half magic damage. It's just not a good item. Also, Warwick is a champion that can literally just ignore you if you don't buy damage. If you don't buy damage on most champions, he can just ignore you. He doesn't have to hit you. He can literally just start hitting the minion wave and healing off the minion wave and queuing minions. And then he's just out healing you. Again, that's a play pattern you avoid when you buy Executioners or Oblivion Orb. Like, even if I'm playing a tank like Zac, I wouldn't buy Bramble Vest. I would buy Executioner, uh, sorry, Oblivion Orb. If I have AP scalings on a tank, it's just not good to buy Bramble because he can just ignore you. He heals so much off the wave. It's ridiculous how much Warwick heals, right? And the point is, Warwick is a champion that if you don't deal enough damage to kill him before he kills you, he will literally just always win. He always wins. Those type of encounters and fights. When the fight is like long. Bramble is good when you need armor. But like I said, he deals half magic damage. So you're buying an item against half the enemy champion. It's just not good. No way around it. Is buying on the heal very gold, early gold efficient, or does it just feel good? Uh, it depends on the champion you're fighting. Some champions heal so much that buying onto healing will deal more damage than the alternative that you would buy. But basically, you get 15 AD, and you basically get like 80% gold efficiency on a onto healing item. So like, Rumble Vest is 30 armor instead of 40. Um, Execution is 15 AD instead of... Um, 15 AD instead of 20. Or like 25-ish, like 22 point something, it's like 22.5 or 23 AD, basically you're supposed to get for 800 gold. Uh, Oblivion Orb gives you uh, 30 AP instead of 40 at 850. So basically, if that 20% less efficiency is worth less than the healing, then it's a bad buy. And if it's not, it's a good buy. So given the fact that my execution is calling at level 4, when I fought them level 4 to 4 in an all-in, did 174 damage. I don't think that the 100, like the 200 gold that I spent on onto healing. I just put it this way: if I spent 200 gold on AD, would I get two, uh, 200 damage out of that AD? Impossible. Therefore, I conclude that the buy is good. Does that make sense? So you're saying unless the team has more AD, then the Bramble is not a good investment in the Carmen Warwick? I'm saying that Bramble Vest against Warwick is dog shit. Full stop. End of story. It's just a bad item. He has full control of when he gets onto healed and when he doesn't. And the armor is shit against him. He, they can have 20 AD champions, and I still don't want to buy Bramble against Warwick specifically, because I can buy other armor items that are helping me anyway later. But I need Executioners to win early game because I'm a champion. That any champion in the game, the longer the fight goes, Warwick has the higher chance of winning because he never runs out of healing. His healing is not cooldown based, it's all on his passive. The lower you get, the faster his attack speed starts stacking. So, if you are tanky, and you can fight him without dropping below 50%, that's great, then you can buy Bramble and do that. But if you drop below 50%, he's probably going to beat you because he gets a massive attack speed steroid against anyone that's below 50% health, right? And then even more so below 20 or 25, whatever it is. But the point is, he gets a huge steroid below 50% health, and he never runs out of healing. So if you trade with him, right, and you deal, let's say you deal, you don't have Executioner, you have Bramble, you deal 400 damage to him in a hard trade, and he deals 300 damage to you, he's going to be half HP now, right? Let's say he's going to be 60% health now, and you're going to be 60% health. And my point is, it's worse to be at that health threshold than both of you being 30-40%, because if he's 30-40%, he's within kill range. You can burst him in your next all-in and just kill him outright. 
Whereas if he's 60%, it's impossible to kill him, and then he's always going to stay at 50-60%. So it's impossible to finish him off, because you don't have the bonus damage, because you spent it on fucking Bramble Vest. An item that, like I said, isn't even gold efficient against him, because he's half magic damage. So, like, for me, it's, like, really hard to understand why you guys even mention this item, when it's, like, it's the worst item in the game against Warwick. Okay, not the worst, but it's, like, really bad. It's extremely bad against Warwick. Because he wants you to deal less damage to him. Like, he wants you to- he wants a long laning phase where he can never be threatened in an all-in, and you can never burst him, because burst is what counters Warwick. So you should buy as much damage as possible to burst him. Because that's how you beat Warwick. Now, if you are losing the matchup, and you cannot beat Warwick no matter what, your champion does not have the capacity to deal enough damage to beat Warwick, you can buy Bramble Vest, the stifle his all in, but again, you're better off buying health and just not fighting him. Does that make sense? Because again, he deals half magic damage. So instead of Bramble Vest and ooh, anti healing, which again, if your argument is if I don't have anti healing, I can't kill him, well, Bramble Vest, you can't just walk up to him and ask him to hit you, can you? So in a 2v2, he has no incentive to hit you, he can just hit your jungler. And in trading, you're not going to beat him anyway, because your champ already doesn't win. So just buy Ruby Crystals. And Ninja Tabai. So you can run away from him. Or like, you know, buy shoes, you know, like, so you can run away. So you understand why for me it's like, definitely like really bad to buy those items? Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, bronze is super useful info for me. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. The point is, is like for me, it's like, like, it's, like I said, right? Like for me, it's like the champion is extremely one-dimensional in the sense that the longer, like, look at it this way: you should look at Warwick's passive as like, it's like a line that just goes up in value. So if you're playing a champion that keeps him at sixty percent health or like 50, whatever the threshold is that he keeps healing, his value from that healing just goes skyrockets. So you have two ways to beat him. One, keep him at 100% health or very high health thresholds where his healing doesn't matter and you just farm and ignore him. Two, you have a way of dipping him from 60% to zero very quickly so that he cannot heal. It's the same with a champion like Vladimir. It's the same with a champion like Gwen. Gwen not as much. Because her healing is less, like, it's just to hit champions to get healing. But basically, onto healing is only good in the, in the niche situation where you can fight the guy back and still beat him. Now, Bramble Vest has the unique property of being an armor item. So, in losing matchups such as Fiora Aatrox, where you can't beat the Fiora, you can buy Bramble Vest as an armor item that's eventually going to evolve into onto healing item that helps you beat her. Because later in the game, when you have your mythic item, you're gonna start beating her, or start being able to fight back. Beating her is a different topic, but you're gonna be able to fight back at that point. That's why you buy it against Fiora, but not Warwick. Because again, Warwick deals half magic damage. Therefore, armor doesn't help you survive that much against him. Is my diaries better than my Aatrox? Right now it is, yeah. It's like people that buy Thornmail against Aatrox and complain that Auntie Heal does nothing. It's a similar idea, yeah. Bit different though, because Thornmail does in fact reduce the amount of healing Aatrox does, because you're buying an armor item against a champion that heals based off how much physical damage he deals to you. Again, it's Warwick specific because he's hybrid, so you can't buy any specific MR or armor item and feel good about it early game because he deals 50-50 of both. So if you're trying to beat him, you should just buy damage. An Executioner or Oblivion Orb are the two items for the job. But Fiora does true damage? Not. Um, the, the percentage of damage he deals to you is actually going to be skewed towards physical damage for the majority of the game, so... Yes, she does true damage, but there's also a trick where you hug the wall when she all ins you, and you don't let her proc the last vital, 
And that's going to, again, make her deal a lot more physical than true, because you don't let her proc the true damage vital, and if you don't let her proc vitals, she doesn't reset them. So she stopped dealing physical damage only to you for the most part. Again, there's a lot of nuance, uh, and I apologize for losing my patience a little bit, because again, like... Sometimes explaining things that are very basic to me, you know, I, I don't understand, like, I don't understand how it's not easy to understand, but it's, it's, it's a conceptual thing. For me, this is a concept that I learned and used in Season 3, right? So 10 years ago, when I was in gold, like, this is how I learned how to beat Warwick, because, fun fact, in World of Warcraft, Death Knights did the same thing. Um, especially in PvP, if you played, um, like, Capture the Flag, for example, or, sorry, you played Raided Battlegrounds, and you'd walk into, like, a Blood Death Knight, or actually, some people actually played uh, Double Blood DK in 2v2s, for example. You could never beat Blood Death Knights in a 2v2, for example. There was a patch where, like, I remember distinctly there being a patch where it was like actually disgusting to just play Double Blood DK. I don't know why I remember that. Um, I'm in a mood for, uh, for an Akali game, honestly. It's kind of out of nowhere, but... This champ is cool. But basically... Because this is a con like even before I even played League, this is a concept that I kind of understood and mastered. Well, mastered is a bit much, but I understood. That's why for me it was like a bit frustrating to have to explain it like fully, because like to me I didn't get why people were still discussing it. But that's the idea against champions that don't run out of health or characters that don't run out of health in PvP games. Um, you almost always want to prioritize. What you call it? Damage and burst. So many virus players. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy, and he's picking virus every game. And the first time I've seen him do well was actually the game he played bot lane virus, which is pretty funny. Can I use prestige skin? No, I like this one. 